Okay, I'm going to talk about active fuel generation system. Okay, as I mentioned on my video, Iron Man specifications, I mentioned the fact that you got to have an active fuel generation system, or AFGS, because as small as that is, the vehicle itself, unless you were to come up with some type of, of chest reactor <laughs> technology that's small enough to fit in somebody's chest, which you guys are just not going to have right now. Uh, you, you're probably not going to see it for another maybe 30, 40 years, <laughs> something like that. Okay? What you need to do is use the technology that you actually do have because there's no place to actually store enough fuel to power a suit that has no wings and be able to take something that probably weighs uh, 500 to 750 pounds and fly it through the air by, by mere force alone. You've got to have some kind of system in place on board that can actually generate the fuel that you need while you're in flight if you want to sustain flight. Here's the way you're going to do that. The technology does exist. You have something, an atmospheric condenser. I'm calling it an H2O condenser because we're just targeting the H2O, the water in the air. As I mentioned in another, the other video on a hybrid motorcycle, I mentioned the condensers that were demonstrated, or, or not demonstrated necessarily, but shown. I think it was in Africa, a guy standing there with this big box-looking machine that, that basically it takes moisture out of the air, condenses it into pools of water, and then people can drink you know, water in these dry areas, but there's still moisture in the air, see, that he can pull out of the air in this, this atmospheric condenser, shall we call it, and there you go, you got H2O. Well, this is the H2O that can be turned into its separated component parts, hydrogen and oxygen, through electrolysis. Ah, so in stages here, we have an atmospheric condenser on board, small enough that it's, it's accumulating water that is then separated into its component parts, hydrogen and oxygen, and then, ah, we can combust the hydrogen. We can use that to propel us through the air. Hey, how about that? <coughs> See, vehicles in the future, where I'm from, we already use this whole thing right here. <laughs> and it's like, but it's like, you know, it's this, that people are always going to say, well, why don't you explain how it works and tell us how to build it and stuff like that. Well, I, you guys know about cell phones. You know how to use them, but you don't ha know how to build one yourselves. Well, how can you expect me to do this? I can't. I can only tell you what I've seen and what I know. AFGS is what we use in the future. Some people stop right here at this point, and they just use uh, H2O for straight, nothing but to run their vehicles. And at this point, uh, when they, they, they get the hydrogen separated out after they've uh, condensed it in their vehicles, I guess I should back up and say, where you would have a gas tank, this would be in its place. Okay. So that not only are you are you out of gas once you've used what was in the gas tank, this can keep going <laughs> because the atmospheric condenser draws the moisture out of the air. You don't have to use drinking water or anything like that. There's moisture in the air. We do that in our future vehicles. Okay, we just draw straight out of the air. If there's a component in the system that where your gas tank is, this is. Okay, we've got the condenser portion of it and we, it's performed as soon as H2O is accumulated. It, it performs electrolysis, uh, next second stage of processing, and it and separates the hydrogen gas into a holding tank. From there, it's pumped into the, the fuel tank, or it's a very small tank compared to your, your tank now. It's not even maybe a gallon. I mean, if you were to compare size-wise, it'd be nothing more than uh, just a place to, to pr create pressure, and then when you step on the gas, you're basically releasing the pressurized hydrogen to go through the fuel line that the gasoline would go through and then burn it in uh, the combustion chamber of your, of your gas-driven vehicles. Yes, we actually have them, but they're not considered gas-driven. They're considered hydrogen-driven. Other people have chosen to go ahead and one step further instead of um, using this for uh, straight combustion, which is, which is in itself clean, because there is water that, that, that comes out the tailpipe and you actually have to have the tailpipe 
they just go ahead and, and have a very small engine like I mentioned on the, the hybrid motorcycle and the only reason they're doing this condensing the water in, inside a holding tank and performing electrolysis separating the hydrogen out is to run a generator like I mentioned on the hybrid motorcycle video and then their vehicle runs off of electricity there's a lot less hydrogen that's necessary because you're not running the vehicle on straight hydrogen gas you're running it on electricity and they actually have batteries for backup in case your condenser goes down or in, case, or in case your electrolysis device goes down or in case for some reason the engine itself that would be perform the combustion goes down <laughs> um, well no they don't have that, I'm sorry um, the, the, the electric motor uh, can run off of batteries rather they, they think it's more, more uh, reliable than the combustion engine is what I'm trying to say they, they just don't like the combustion portion because there is a possibility of still explosion even though it's very rare and has never really uh, happened that often to my knowledge the thing is here you got the H2O, con H2O condenser okay we have technology that pulls moisture from the air well that's water ah water can be separated by electrolysis into hydrogen gas hydrogen gas can be combusted in your vehicles as proven uh, by Mythbusters episode where they just placed a hose where it was spewing out hydrogen gas right into the the uh, carburetor and ran a vehicle on it. And they they said, hey, I guess you can run a, via a current vehicles and just be easy to just switch them right over to hydrogen gas. The problem is storage and stuff like that. Well, this this solves that problem. Don't worry about storage. You want you want an active fuel generation system. You want AFGS. It's on the go. It does it while you're driving. And it provides a backup to the batteries as well as the batteries providing a backup to this. Okay? From the HTO condenser, which runs on electricity, you've got batteries in the car. No matter what style of vehicle in the future we have, we still have battery technology. <coughs> but when you have this and this involved as well, <coughs> they back each other up because if the if you don't have any uh, water you've got battery power to run the condenser to create more water to perform electrolysis on and get the hydrogen out if you don't have any um, any battery power you'd probably still have enough gas in the, the small store small very very small storage container to run a small uh, small backup engine to create electricity repower the batteries and then continue on the batteries themselves, if you don't have any, have, any, any, uh, have any hydrogen, would run the condenser and the electrolysis device and so on. You know, they, they back each other up. You can't use one source, you use the other. So the, in the future, all vehicles are clean burning. They're either running totally off of hydrogen, but most of them, to even conserve hydrogen gas, they just use the AFGS system just and just run it straight into um, the combustion chamber. They don't even have a storage one. <coughs> they just run a, a, a generator enough to, to repower the batteries, which are eco-friendly, and just, just use electricity to run their vehicles. But I'm thinking for you guys now, this would work to replace your, your fossil fuel uh, gasoline. Just pull H2O out of the air, water out of the air, have electrolysis performed, and then shunt or or put the the hydrogen gas right into the combustion chamber through the the fuel lines, and boom, you guys can can do this now. You have this technology to do all of these things, and get the benefit of it. We you have an unlimited supply of gas, hide in the highway of hydrogen, as I said in the pre other video, right off the coast of the whole United States, and everybody who has a coastline has water on their coastline, and that have, contains hydrogen gas. Once you do this, you can pull the hydrogen gas out of it. You don't have to pump it. It's right there on your coastline. You just bring it up into a plant, and, and well, if you do pump it, it's just right there. <sighs> surface level. You don't even have to go below the surface. You just stick a hose down in the water and pump it up, and then perform electrolysis and pull out your hydrogen gas. It's so simple. Why aren't we doing this? And this goes for power plants as well. You know, all of our power plants are like this now. And we, what we do is we, we pump the water inland to all these different uh, uh, places around the country, and that's where they do it, production. <coughs>